Jesus Christ. Everybody likes their own brand. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Quackcast 290. This is Quackcast 2. No, it's 289. That's it. Not 290 yet. It's 289. This is Ozone Ocean and with me is uh, Master Baines. Hello. The Master Baines are. And we have we have Mistress Tance. Hello, Mistress Tance. Hello. 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 How are you today? <laughs> Hello. And we have Joan de Pitt. Or Pitt de Arc. Oi. <laughs> Pitt de Arc. Hello, love. You know, these things are great to wear until you get an itch in the back of your head. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my God. Oh. That's what the sword is for. Oh, yeah. Ah, you see, Baines is the brains of the operation. Now you know why. You can scratch yourself through your chain mail, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> I often do. Just it's everyone... what the witches are for. <laughs> Pitface is wearing a chainmail outfit. Just to clarify yes. for people who are listening. Hey. See? She's ready for war. Against yeah. her bare skin all over her entire body. It, it is my skin now. I don't have real skin anymore. Skin it's, it, yeah, I can't go to airports anymore. <laughs> or go into like public schools, but um, it's my skin. Like a like a can of pit face. <laughs> <laughs> a can of pit Go. face. I'm gonna open a can of pit face on you. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds remarkably um, unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, in th- this particular quackcast, we're going to be talking about uh, building up your personal brand, your online brand, which is what we all do. Where we do like we have an online presence, we have our comic underneath our pseudonym our, our comic nom de plume or nom de guerre as pit faces because she's a warlike person nom de plume for the rest of us and yeah and we, we try and what? we try and build oh, up that uh, that online online presence with all our creation underneath that name and it, it uh it can be an interesting process but before we get into that we've got to mention our uh Featured comic for the week, which Kwai featured, and Kwai is going to tell us about the featured comic, which was I Hand Voice. I Hand Voice. Take it away, Kwai. Hello, this is Kwai Degakse, and the feature I have selected for this week is I Hand Voice by Calamity Comics, and it is rated M for Mature. Hand, Eye, and Voice is the moniker of the trio sworn to protect Sparta City. Hand knows the criminal mind and is the muscle. Eye is a supernatural powerhouse and crime lab rolled into one. And Voice is an ex-cop wrapped up in an invisible suit. The three are called when the world vomits out pure evil, such as the Pigeon. At the moment, Hand, Eye, and Voice must fight against Carly Rand, a female nemesis who was once seen as an ally. The comic is drawn in black and white using traditional inking methods. One interesting part of the art process is that some pages were sketched in 2011 and inked four years later in 2015. If you would like to read a story about the good guys protecting a city, and if you enjoy the art style of detective comics, then read I Hand Voice by Calamity Comics, rated M. And that was Kwai the Gakse with I Hand Voice. Am I remembering that right? I Hand Voice, I did. I remembered it right. Yay, I'm a genius. Okay, next up we have the song by Gumballs, and his song is the theme to Earth, Earth, a comic called Earth. And I would describe this song as being... Uh, it features clashing cymbals, electric guitar that blasts out like a deadly ray gun. It's hard-rocking goodness. Now, you guys have all yes. listened to this. Would you consider some nice, uh, nice drums in there, some nice rocking drums. And some, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that guitar worked. Uh, worked. Heavy drum, wasn't it? Wait, well... 
Yeah, yeah, some pretty like heavy uh, hard rock drums. And... It's a nice composition. It's got some layers to it. I liked it. Yeah, a lot of space, just like that uh, guitar rock ought to have. Yeah, makes you want makes you want to sing along, even though there are no lyrics yet. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna get on that. I'm gonna get right on that and see how it yeah. goes. Yeah. Yeah. And the comic, oh my god, that artwork is fantastic, by the way. Wait, it's a comic? Yeah, it's a theme for the comic. Or Earth? Earth, is that how you say it? U R T H E or whatever? Earth. Uh, but awesome. Uh, Looks really cool. It does. It does. Exciting effects. All right, take it away, Mr. Gum Wallace. Crazy Ozone Ocean version with lyrics based on the comic Earth. Take it away, Ozone Ocean and Gunwaller. Long before the dinosaur. That long history was mine I will show you through that time What your history books don't tell you Is just how great we were The creatures of legend too Think of the beginning of time and civilization's birth. That long history was mine. First people called it. Earth. And that was Earth by Mr. Gum Wallace. Fantastic. I really love that tune. It was rocking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could be a DJ, couldn't I? You could. You basically are. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Music by Gun Wallace. And now, we're back to the quack cast with Tonserine Pitface and The Banes. Boom. Isn't that funny? Boom. For the listeners, it's only been like a few minutes, but for us, it's been like three days. <laughs> <laughs> right. To get a, a, a one hour quack cast takes us a yeah. long time. Yeah, it takes because us a long time. Because we, we have so much care and we keep uh, editing it and second guessing ourselves and, you know, putting our best out there for every quack cast. Exactly. Every. Yeah. It is. Only the best. Only the best. Only the best. That's it. <laughs> so what you hear is the best choice bits, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> From days of recording. We pluck them out and we give them to you, the Quackhouse public. Yeah. 
So in this particular Quackcast, we're going to be talking about building up your online brand, your your yourself. So my example for this is, say I'm Ozone Ocean to the public at large, and Ozone mm. Ocean is where my creative output is put under that that name, Ozone. So I've got all these these comics, Pinky TA. Um, Bottomless Waitress, Pink Skin, my uh, aborted comic, which was the comedy version of Pinky DA. Um, oh, well. Oh, yeah, well. there was that. Yeah. Uh, f- of course, the, the Quack cast is all under Ozone Ocean as well. Um, being an admin of Drunk Duck is under Ozone Ocean. And basically, a lot of my online presence is under that name. So you build up your online brand under your particular name. Say if you're a member of a porn site or something like that, you know, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have your main name under that or, or something that was would would compromise that that main kind of main kind of name, would you? So you know, once you have your creative properties under that that main thing, you're just going to keep on. You don't want to do anything to damage that. So Tan Serene, you've got your mm. your books like say the Art of Veiling. Um, all those kind of things. They're they're under the Tansari name, aren't they? Yeah. I I bought that book, I should know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um yeah. Uh, the main reason though isn't that I lead separate lives, uh, like uh, you know, being a, a creator by night and by day, you know, something like a boring lawyer or whatever. Tans isn't um, even sure uh, what she does in the daytime. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, it's blank. You know, yeah. I have memory. Well, like I'm a lawyer or something. She yeah, something. <laughs> but now the the main reason for for having a different name is that my Greek name is really long and probably would intimidate people and won't wouldn't be easy to remember. Whereas Tangerine, you probably will remember because it's a fruit it's memory. and I'm a fruit. yeah so <laughs> there you go that's good and all your creative stuff is under that now though I mean yeah. like your comics like Wolf which is of course the best greatest comic Wolf we will uh, know <laughs> no. uh, uh, something that we don't talk about <laughs> you can put that under the the, the, the other name then but um <laughs> So, all right, without Moonlight, Brave Resistance, they're under the Tanserin name. Um, Tanserin and Pitface for Brave Resistance. Yeah, Pitface, which is the other big name here we're talking about. So people might know Pitface from, of course, the landmark comic, Putrid Meat. That, you know, everyone should have that on their bookmarks. Like, that should be their, their home page, basically. <laughs> and then there's... The As a matter of fact, you should be turning off the cast right now and going to read it. If yes. You, if you haven't already. I mean, like, most of our listeners should have already read it all the way through. They should be on about their fifth read by now, or sixth. So, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> Baines and I are only on our fourth, so, you know, we're... Yeah, what are you going to do? We're slow readers. Yeah. <laughs> we're slow <laughs> learners. Yeah. And the, the <laughs> epic of Blitzov as well. Which is, you know, the latest uh, opus to come out of the Pitface uh, brand. <laughs> See, Pitface has a whole brand team behind it, like Aerosmith in the '90s, and they they sort of say, "Look, now this is what you're going to do this week, and that's what you're going to do that week," and you know they're promoting her. So that's right. what we're talking about. So so building up your online brand, your online presence, you've got to. It's like the craft and the attention that went into uh, the creation of hit songs, like. Pour some sugar on me. Yeah, no, that is a <laughs> I know great that song, was, isn't it? Pitface said that was an influence. Yeah, an early influence on him. She loves that song, and for well, good she, reason. Yeah. Pour some sugar on me. Yeah, see, that just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? I mean, it's solid. It's so fantastic. Like you said, Bangs. Jeez, you should be leading this quack house. It shouldn't be Ozone. No. It should be the Bangs show. You have I have brand. no online brand. Yeah. Now, and the Bane's online brand encompasses um, Bottomless Waitress, of course, which is a fantastic comic. I mean, that is a work of 
art. And then, it is beautiful artwork. <laughs> tell you that much. Fantastic writing. Then we have Typical Strange, which is just, wow, sublime. And then we have Typical Strange, the animation, which actually came first, and not many people realize this. That's right. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that, actually. Yeah. There you are. You, you're one of the not many that didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> not many now know I, it. Fewer even. Now I select few. Yes, exactly. Welcome to the inner circle. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. This, so Baines has like um, like quack, uh, drunk duck Baines and also the YouTube Baines, and that's all one. So if you search for you know Baines creative output, you'll you'll see those things all under that that uh, nom de plume. So that that's the Baines online brand, and and you wouldn't spoil that by um, having something disgusting underneath the Baines online brand, would you? You know, like uh, I I don't know. I haven't thought about it enough. That's why I'm glad we're doing this quack cast. Maybe I'll learn something. Yeah. yeah, I agree with I agree with Baines on that one. <laughs> I might be joining porn sites under that name. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> Well, I'll, do, I'll just do a quick search and uh, <laughs> me too. Oh I can't my. even find myself. My You'll go from is... Baines to Bones. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's dark, dark kind of way, dark, dark. And so, so all of us have our things underneath our particular online brand, and it's pretty embryonic with us, isn't it? Basically, I mean, like we also have our, our, our deep. Deviant art profiles underneath our names, which we have our comics on. Baines, I, I don't know if you've got a Deviant art, but I know Pitface and Tansarin, you've both got Deviant art ones under similar names, haven't you? Yep. I Do you have. post your comics there or just individual um, um, pieces? Everything. It's just divided in different sub galleries and you know, everything from commissions to really old sketches that I should take down at some point and um, <laughs> comics and everything neatly categorized cool. that's another thing so taking down stuff would you guys ever like um, like design or edit your online brand by deleting things that don't fit with the image that you want to project you know so you, you think like you've got some comic that's, that's under your account and you think no this doesn't represent me anymore I'm going to delete that I'm going to delete that picture because that's that makes me look bad that, that isn't what the image that I want to project would you do that? Uh, yeah if it doesn't fit with what I'm trying to do yeah after this I haven't even thought about it before but after this quack cast maybe going to deleting going to a, a, a purge <laughs> 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 What was that? Repeat. Who? Uh, Tants or Pitts. Tants and Pitts. I think Pitts frozen. She's frozen. She is. She's frozen. Let her out. She's frozen. Let her go. <laughs> let her go. <laughs> let it go. <laughs> I have to watch that. I haven't ever seen that. And I'm, uh, that, Me that neither. Thing. No, it's you, have, uh, you are, you know, one of the blessed few. Um, I've been, yeah. I've been catching up on my my things slowly. My pop, pop cultural references. Yeah, tonight I watched Ant Man and the Green Hornet. Oh wow, Green Hornet! That was like twelve years ago, wasn't it? <laughs> Green Hornet. I haven't no, seen that one. Actually. That was two thousand and eleven. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, when I was in San Diego, I saw the actual car they used for that film and everything. Cool. And I thought, Jesus, that's a piece of crap. But, yeah, I saw it. <laughs> and it's a, it's a fun movie. It's really fun. It was better than Ant-Man, I thought. It was more entertaining than Ant-Man. I got to see it. You did recently see one of the uh, Nolan Batman movies, didn't you? I did the first one, and it was very teenage. It was very teenage, yeah. Baines, you have to add taunts. I mean, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Deirdre, you have to add Pit. That's her name. Damn it. 
this straight. Yeah, I saw the first Nolan one, and it was so amateurish. Well, it wasn't amateurish. It was a well-made film, as films go. But the writing was so amateurish. It was so teenager. You know, so Batman learned how to be Batman because he trained as a ninja. And they were ninjas. And, oh my God, it was just so banal. It makes the, the Keaton films look like... Shakespeare, it literally does. It's dumb. So you don't like ninjas in Batman? Well, not in the way they did it. It was just dumb. It was so embarrassing. It was, you know, I was embarrassed for him. I was embarrassed for myself for watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it, man. I thought it was great. Oh, Baines. And the second one also really like really loved well, third one was horrible that has that has a great a reputation the, the second one so I'm going to have to look up that the, the third one at least has him doing the funny voice into the <laughs> that's <laughs> right the Banes yeah the Bane yeah your character so I'm going to have to see that for that reason so back to online brand anyway so we're, we're talking about the online uh, your online brand that you have to um uh, like nurture and speaking of that one particular character who we all know and love Hyena Hell Baines you probably haven't sort of kept up with Hyena Hell for a long time but Tarns and Pitt you, you guys have as, you've, you guys have kept up with the good old Hyena Hell haven't you yeah. she's my daughter Oh, she is she's a, a beautiful as well as my sister and your mother oh as well. Oh my god, this is an intrigue. It's, it's a freaky like relationship. Yeah. <laughs> so, good old Hyena Hell, she built up her online brand around that name, and her online brand is so strong that she, um, even in, in uh, like, public life, she sort of thinks of herself as Hyena Hell, and, you know, people will call her that. Um, cool. Maybe you should have invited her in this cast because she's the only one that knows about that. Actually, that has an online brand. <laughs> I've tried to, I've tried to, but yeah, it's it's very hard to get her online. She's a very elusive, elusive Scarlet Pimpernel sort of character. I seek her here, I seek her there, I seek her everywhere, and I can't get her online. So, <laughs> Hyena Hell built up her online brand very strongly, and and that was like like central to her personality. So. Like she had created a Facebook account with Hyena Help as as her her name, and um, all her stop making that bloody noise. Her <laughs> face like shredding documents or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god. So Hyena Hell had made this online brand like uh, very strongly. Like all her art is signed Hyena Hell. Um, her Facebook account was Hyena Hell. Um, she had all her creative stuff posted under that name, and it was built up. And her Facebook became like uh, like an almost on an online art piece. And she'd be posting her comics under there, and um, her no writing. Yeah. Uh, no self self really... Exactly. She'd be doing a different outfit every day and posting it on there. And it was like um, performance art underneath that brand. And then some wanker reported her name as being fake. So she was in a quandary, you know. What, what does she do? Does she... Um, like defend it and uh, you know say you know this is me or does she become a, a Facebook page or whatever in the end in her own fatalistic way she decided not to defend it or whatever and, and just uh, get deleted off Facebook so that was a shame and you know yeah. because yeah. High in the Hell was so central to her online brand she didn't want to compromise it and then you know that, her, that creative output is killed but you know that that's a good example of someone who identified so strongly with her online brand, her creative output. You know that that basically was her. So yeah, 
that that was now she home. lives in a, she lives in a little shanty in Tibet, no internet. She well, just disappeared she, off the face of the earth. She right? has. She has. Is that how that story ends? Oh God! Friggin' totally. Facebook, man! You're ruining lives. Friggin' ruining Facebook. Them. Exactly. It's, it's terrible. Anyway, <laughs> but, <laughs> that's a whole other story. Yeah. And no, but like it's, we don't know when she will reappear, and you know, bloom with a lot of as the like drawings and. Amazing uh, composition skills in, in dressing. Exactly. Yes. We we have. Myths. I feel like we're having like a prophecies a funeral for her. Yeah. Like she's not here, and we're like, who knows when again we'll see the bloom of hyena hell. <laughs> Wipe a tear away. It Good. is really unfortunate, though, Good man. Night, I mean, sweet princess. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. It is. She's underneath that, that name, and that was her persona. That was her full thing. You know, I I have artworks of from her signed with with that name. You know, that that is her her you know, essence. So and she didn't move to a non Facebook like platform or something like that. I think she's still on Instagram or something. But you know, Facebook was the main right. Uh, yeah, like. Uh, outlet for her creative output and that that was her creative output and to take that away is just like criminal really isn't it i mean it's kind of it's pretty cruel yeah this this is an artist and this is her creative output as a person not as a page or something you know the the person was the art and taking that like on here she, I mean, she used to be part of the forums on here and stuff. And I remember, you know, she would post every so often and her artwork was on here. But you didn't get the exposure of her that you have on Facebook because that was her. I mean, she really did turn it into her platform. It's, it's, was her personal expression and not, and everything was always personalized to her. You know, I never saw her repost anything and just be like let it speak for itself or like you know just just use someone else's voice it was always straight from her so it's unfortunate to lose that I mean hopefully maybe she'll come back to the duck or something and somehow she continues to be a presence but it's really it's unfortunate it's like watching a dying star (laughs) It Maybe is. not that bad. Like she'll find something else. I hope, but it is. It's the end of an era. It's like David Bowie dying in the end. 2016 has been a terrible year. All the good ones. Lemmy. We'll have, we'll have to tell Bowie. her that you made that comparison. That that hiatus hell losing her Facebook is like David Bowie. Dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like hiatus hell is still alive and well. But then, yeah, but it's still on par with losing. Lemmy, all the greats. All Lemmy. The greats. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, Lemmy. Yeah, but that, that's the thing. There's a, there's a brand, but this is about online. Who? who? I've never heard of this person. Well, you, you wouldn't, it's not, wouldn't be your cup of tea. No? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, he, he did some songs you wouldn't know. You, you'd, you'd never have heard of them. So, just... Yeah. Did, is he that one that wrote Pour Some Sugar on Me? That's him, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Exactly. Great rhythm to that. I love it. That's why it's such a good song. <laughs> <laughs> Pour some sugar on me. You know how Sing it along. goes, Oz. <laughs> Sing along, Pit. <laughs> so, yeah, the Hyena Hell brand is just, it has died with that which is a real shame because that well, was her I won't, main I won't outlet I go as far as to say yeah, that, that say she that. died with that okay. because she still if she carries it with her throughout her daily life then it hasn't died yeah. but and it's it's, it's uh, just it's just a yeah 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 with on Instagram apparently but you know who checks Instagram who's well it? it's still no but listen though she's still has her brand I think and this this is an interesting topic maybe she can you still have your brand without being public like I mean without being 
worldwide web public about it. I think you can. I think you can have this other persona or this part of your persona without necessarily having a live platform for it. That's, yeah, I agree. That's possible. I mean, yeah. But cause... basically, deciding on, on who you want to be, telling yourself who you are, mm. is designing your own brand in the first place. So, which is how you self-define could be argued that it is the first stage of uh, having a brand in the first place. Like how you identify, how you act, how you interpret the world around you, how you approach the world around you is part of your brand in the first place. So yeah. don't actually need the web or any kind of public forum in order to have one. <laughs> she's, like, she's still alive. She's just in remission. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Like um, like I say, I've got like artworks from her with Hyena Hell as the name. And when I, I, I went flew over into the States and like hung out with her in 2011 I always referred to her as Hyena Hell not um her mm -hmm. her other name so yeah you're you're probably both exactly right there you know the your your brand can become yourself we have people like Prince he was always known as Prince he wasn't known as his full name whatever that was uh, Alice Cooper and think about this too the Alice difference Cooper, between yeah. perhaps because we keep on using the word brand, and that's that means something very specific, almost something commercial. And there's a difference, maybe a little bit of a difference, between a brand and a persona. And I don't know if maybe we're looking more at which one that we want to focus on here, or maybe both. We could compare and contrast, or maybe it's getting too late for that. I don't know, but because um, they both like a persona is, as I think anyway, something more that you create about yourself. Like, even without having a product to produce of yourself, it is something that you mold yourself into while having a brand kind of has this indication that you have something to sell. You have right. something to put out there into the market or whatever. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. The persona thing. I always think about, I mean, Alice Cooper, of course, but I think of um, Joey Ramone, who was kind of this, when he was younger, was this really kind of clean-cut, nerdy kind of guy. And he completely changed, like on purpose, changed himself into, you know, the Joey Ramone of the Ramones and everything. It's like mm. punk icon dude. And he, you know, he lived that way. And also, obviously, they had a product, too, but... Um, but even without that product, he would likely still be he Joey became, Ramone. Oh yeah, totally. He became that that dude. It was his persona. It was his persona. Yeah. Okay. Let Let's say interesting. You, you have, for some people, you have a persona, and then they turn that into a brand and they market it. Like for Prince, for example, he he had a persona. Um, Davy Jones became David Bowie. Hmm. And that was became his persona, but he marketed that as well. I'm sure at home he wasn't David Bowie, you know, with his kids and stuff. Yeah, he was Davy Jones, so that that was his marketed, branded persona sort of thing. That's yeah, because there are some people that do purely just have a brand too. Like, you know, you get up on stage and the person you're portraying comes out, and even then, I don't know, but. Anyway, it, yeah, I'm going to ramble, so let's somebody else talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, Tansarine, when she performs as her, you know, glam metal self with the spiked up, bleached blonde hair, you know, that's like a foot above her head, that giant mohawk, the G-string, the, uh, the tiny bra, <laughs> when she's on stage, I mean, man... You'd never know that was the meek little Tansarine that does the comics. No, sorry, she never does any of that. She just does the, uh, the performing on stage. She doesn't do comics, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tansarine is a writer and a comic artist, and you know, that, that, that is her artistic persona. 
because people can't pronounce Tanya. Tanya. Yeah, yeah, let's see. Can't pronounce Tanya. People yeah, are dumb. You can pronounce Tanya, but uh, how well can you pronounce Yeritsiru? Yeah, yeah. zero. It's my turn. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, so Tanya, you wouldn't like your your persona or your handle, whatever you want to call it, is basically in your name, then, right? I mean. The way you act when you're Tangerine is no different than when you're Tanya. Would you say so? Yeah. So it's basically yeah, one of um, the same. Thing. Yeah. I'd say that I have sort of removed a level, not completely. I don't think I would be able to. But I have removed a level of, of uh, my political self, in a sense. Like I, I mm. try not to be super consistent about certain things. I mean, I am advocating for things and even, you know, in everything I do in my comics, there is an angle to it, but um, yeah, I, I do try to not be as I am in real life, which is heavily politicized as mm -hmm. a person. So, yeah, that, that would be like Tangerine is is more neutral let's say, than Tanya is in certain things. But not, not more neutral, but not neutral. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does. It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Tanserine, um, Tanya is, is is like, you know, the 60 Minutes reporter, basically. <laughs> she is. Yeah. No, no, more she's than this, that. Like, really cares about libertarianism, and she's like this hardcore kind of right-wing type. Exactly. But, so she tones that down. So how, how could you miss that? <laughs> yeah, well, it comes out from time to time. Yeah, you can see it. Glimpse. <laughs> I can follow along, but yeah. She's hardcore. She's heavy. Whereas Tansarine yeah. is 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 the the more. She ain't heavy. Person. She's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I wanted to say it. I'm like I want. I saw it in your eye, man. I'm, I'm like, I gotta get to it first. I yeah. gotta get to it first. People will think I'm a genius. Face wind. Tanya, so heavy. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Now you know. <laughs> the more you now know. you know. Ah, uh, me too, man. There's no. Uh, I guess a lot of. Uh... I don't know, I was going to say what I do, but it's nothing is really done on purpose. It's just kind of the way it happens. I haven't focused much on building a brand or definitely not on persona. Uh, it's kind of there, but there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot more that's not there, sort of in, in a comic-focused kind of world. Um, like in a state with that, you know? Yeah. And, you know, the other stuff kind of peeks through sometimes, but... Uh, yeah. Similar but different. Well, with Ozone Ocean, like most of my creative stuff is done through there. When I first started online, it was I was going to put all my paintings and like artwork through the, the Michael John Morris brand. And I did for quite a time, you know, I had, had it all through there. But then I thought... No, I, I like the Ozan Ocean sort of thing, and you know, I'll, I want to separate that out from the Michael John Morris because, like, anyone could be called Michael John Morris, but yeah. no one is Ozan Ocean. That is just me. That is mine alone, and I'm, I'm just going to build up yes. Ozan Ocean and put all my artwork under there. So I, I've, I've kept doing that, and I've deliberately, you know had Ozan Ocean under certain things that I, I like to put forward as being my point of view or my brand and like Hyena Hell, I my Facebook thing was under Ozan Ocean for a long time until some wanker reported me. That's yeah. the thing, right? Like I mean you can't depend on a platform like Facebook like to keep yeah. everything going, you know, because you, you can can't. you can't really uh, they'll end up doing whatever they want. They and and yeah Facebook sucks. <laughs> That's the subtext of this uh, episode. <laughs> but 
Facebook sucks. Basically, it sucks. Yeah, so then I had to become Michael John Morris under there as well, which I hate. No one knows me. Because mm. basically, I, I'm, I'm the admin of Drunk Duck. I've got all this creative stuff under that, that, that name, and everyone knows me under that name. And when people friend me on Facebook, it's because they know me under that Ozone Ocean name, you know? And yeah. it, it makes sense. Why would they friend me under Michael? Whatever, you know? So Yeah. I don't know, I've noticed that the people that know me as Tangerine, I mean, I have it like a sort of nickname in Facebook, so you can actually find me by uh, typing in Tangerine. Yeah. Uh, they they still find me without any problem, and, and the people that know me as uh, Tanya Yeltsidu find me like that. And somehow, neither of these two different groups know me as as the other person. Like nobody knows yeah. that it, oh, it is like there the type it and nobody knows Tanya Yeritsidu. You know, if they have friended Tanjan. I don't know how that happens but somehow they just mentally they, they separate. Yeah. Or they, they don't separate but they just okay. think of you one way, yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, I, I, I definitely think of all of you guys in your nickname as your nicknames. When I think of you, I think of Tans. It never even occurs to me that oh yeah, that's not that would be a very odd name or Pit. Like I think of her as <laughs> Pit, <laughs> you know, like, and I, I know your name, but I like my in my head the go to is like Pit. Maybe but you can't say it three times in a row. That's true because you'll come out of the mirror and kill me. Right? Well, yeah. I don't want to, but I, it's just the rules, dude. It's the way the curse works, I understand. <laughs> uh, and Oz, like, um, yeah, I never think of you as Morris or Michael or John or whatever your name is. <laughs> no, it's when I did the bushes. Of Michael, I didn't think of a person in a castle or in a palace, you know, being extremely decadent. Right. So, I don't know, maybe that is part of, of who... Oz is anyway, and he's just not owning up to it completely. <laughs> I didn't even realize he was gone. I wasn't paying attention. He's not <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why isn't he saying anything? <laughs> like, did you guys just out me? Bastards. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to keep that secret. Damn it. That's not meant to be part of my online persona. I don't know she doesn't pee. Fuck. <laughs> you are the girl who said, well, who didn't say why you weren't there. Oh, damn it. You tricked me. You guys had this plan <laughs> from the beginning. Wow, there are layers and layers. These guys are devious. Banes, pit, tons. <laughs> Oh, I can't fathom it. Damn it. So, yeah, <laughs> online brands, where are we up to? What have I missed out on with my terrible escape? I don't know. Have we talked about anything, really? We it's have. Kind of so we have said that how we all think about each other in, you know, in specific ways and right. that goes to the name. Yeah, so I, I'm thinking I'm, about you guys I'm nude at the moment and... But we yeah. know your fantasies. <laughs> and it's odd, like on the comic, like people who, um, like you guys, and then people like who comment on my comic and I talk to in the Drunk Duck forums, like they all have nicknames, right? And uh, for a lot of them, that's the only way I know them. I don't even know their real names. So it's weird. It is a little bit odd, but yet I also like care about them kind of you know like you it's yeah it's weird yeah we we know them even though they have those... no idea who they are really behind. we know them by those online personas we prefer to know them by the on online personas and um that's a big thing like so well, yeah product place and i i thought yeah i know a person that is not a comic and, and stuff but he has uh, officially said that he's a big YouTuber and he said that his YouTube nickname, he has now made it legally his own name. <laughs> oh, wow. He changed his name. Wow. 
yeah, he changed his name to be legally the the nickname that he he has and that he's known by, and he's uh, like extremely extremely big channel, like four million view subscribers or whatever, and. He said that the reason is that he identifies so much with the nickname and so little with his actual name that um, it only made sense to actually change it legally. And that's how he's called in real life now. Wow. So there's a dude walking around out there with the name Darth Silius9425. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I would change my name to Ozan Ocean in a heartbeat. I think that's cool. What about really? you guys? Yeah. Definitely. No. You wouldn't change your name to Tansari? No. All my legal activism is under my real name. Hmm. Could be passive. What about you, Pitface? Probably not. Uh huh. I got drunk enough, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I I wouldn't have a problem with it. I um, one time I I did a project many many years ago. I did we did a movie, and I I was like for some reason I wanted to change my name, so I changed my last name, and uh, it, it uh, offended my dad when oh. he saw that. Cool. Yeah, so I would. That would be the only reason that I would. I wouldn't. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I happen to like my actual name a bit, so I, I probably won't be changing it anytime soon. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, actually, actually, I have changed my name once. So. Oh, I really? Do that. Yeah, yeah. My my actual my surname isn't the one I was born with. It's. It's my grand, my maternal grandfather's name that I have taken on. I, my original name was something uh, else. Yeah. And the reason that I did that was because it was uh, in honor of my grandfather's memory. He has a really big history. And he doesn't have any male offspring. So that was the way to keep propagating and keeping the same name alive. Right. So, yeah, I'm not going to change it yeah. for that reason as well. But, yeah. Uh, me too. My dad is not around, so I wouldn't... That would be like a dishonor thing now to get rid of my actual name. If I mean, nobody... I don't have a huge audience anyway, so it doesn't mean really... You just have to change your first name. That's all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm carrying the first Actually, if, if you rearrange your first name... Some pain, you can spell my first name, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> do it, do see, it, Bane. See, Pitface has a time and a place, man. Like, Pitface ain't that different from who I am in, in real life. Fight me in real life! But, like... <laughs> <laughs> um, it is different to an extent. Like, it's it's a facet of my personality that's been, like... Exaggerated a bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and it, and it used to not even really be exaggerated. Like back when I was younger, like early twenties and stuff, like that was basically who I was. But you know, you grow up and stuff, and um, and and you act different to to different people. You know, I'm not gonna go up to like my boss or like my dad or something and yeah. like say shit that Pitface would say. You know, right? But um, I mean, it's, it's still part of me. It's just. It's 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 like a it's a special card that I carry, you know. When I'm pit face, the world's good, you know. But I'm not I'm not meant to be pit face all the fucking time. Uh, cool. <laughs> I remember when you first joined Junk Dog, and um, you know, people going, "Wow, who is this? You know, this 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 this, this person." I remember talking to um, when I met um, what's your name in New York uh, in. 2011 um, Eisenbach you guys oh yeah Eisenbach? yeah and I met her and she said wow yeah pit face gee she's she's really unusual she's really hardcore <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is actually your stuff does function well as a brand like I remember when I first saw putrid meat 
as a title, I think. Maybe I think I saw I don't remember if I saw your name like in the forums or the name Putrid Meat on the site or whatever, what which one I saw first. But those go together well, you know. Yeah. That name. That and you had some other stuff like kind of, you know, gut gut rot or whatever, I think was your old email or something. Yeah, that that used to be my original kind of persona before I actually started putting anything out on the internet. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I used to go to like chat house all the time and all that stupid <laughs> shit. And um yeah, that was just the name that I liked for myself, but all that kind of comes from the same smutty core, so that's why it's all similar. <laughs> it all fits, actually, it fits together well, yeah, it's a good book. It does, it does. The name Pitface actually comes from a band that I had in high school. I think I told you guys that before. No. No? What did you play? Yeah. You sing? I had a... I tried to. I played guitar. Let's say I tried to. None of us were really yeah. good. Right, but cool. um, there were a few incar- incarnations of this band from time to time. I'm still friends with a few of uh, the members. There was, uh, there was me. I was on... Uh, on guitar and on vocals and uh it was my buddy Chris Wilstead and he was on guitar and like I was the big Megadeth person he was the big Metallica person you know and then um uh our drummer was like his his name's Joe and I'm still friends with him um Tanya you know him as uh, uh Sheppy yeah um, yeah he's on Facebook um and he has the perfect drummer physique, like big, like he had this long blonde, like Viking hair, and like used to eat songs about or eat write songs about <laughs> eating babies, and like um, I remember in high school, like we'd we'd walk down the hallway, and it was super crowded, you know, and uh, I'd walk behind him, and he'd come up. And this, I mean, this high school in the middle of Wisconsin, you know, so there weren't other people like us there. It was mostly, you know, just suburban kids and stuff and so whatever Joe wanted to clear the way he'd go to the head of the hall and go <gasps> and everybody it was like Moses parting the Red Sea and I would just follow him <laughs> down the hallway um, so he was our drummer and then we never had a steady basis it kind of switched out from time to time and then we fizzled out and then I got I got the band together one more time all with different members this time for uh there was a school talent show that was being put together, of all things. And I thought, well, I want to do something, right? So, in, in hey, this is pretty good. So, in three days, I got the band together, all the different players. And we got a little demo tape together where we played uh, Ace of Spades by Motorhead <laughs> and and sent that in. And as an, uh, like a secret encore, if we were to be picked, I was going to play Hook and Mouth by Megadeth because um, the guy that uh, I was dating at the time, that was kind of one of our songs. But, um, yeah, we uh, we got passed up for the, the national anthem on piano, so we didn't get to play. Uh, so that was the short life of... of uh, Pit face. So I decided I I loved the name so much because pit face. You know, mosh pit. You know, you're in the mosh pit too long. And you get the yeah. pit face. So I decided I I loved it. It was still my baby, so I wanted to adopt it and keep it alive. Keep it in the blood. Cool. Uh, I wrote the last song I wrote was called Obli- Oblivion. It's been like years. I haven't written anything new since then. But uh, that's like. I recorded it with my friend, and at the time I was like working on the getting the animated thing going, the comic going. And I didn't have a title, and he was like, "You got to call it Oblivion." He's like, "These characters are all like kind of living an oblivious like lifestyle or whatever. They're all sort of you know, <laughs> slackers, whatever." And he really <laughs> pushed hard to call it that, and I was like, "Yeah, I guess." And like, it's got to be something else, and I. But I was going to call it that until I, I I looked it up online and there's a million things called that. There's like t- 25 movies with that title. <laughs> yeah. Just so non, you know. Did you did you ever see the Wild West one? It was like this sci-fi Wild West take. I think it had Lucy Lawless in it or something like that. I thought it did. No, I haven't. Yeah, there's an old uh, movie called Oblivion. Oblivion. Yeah. And there's like a Tom Cruise movie since then that came up. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> but even before that, it was like tons of... It's just not... It doesn't stand out enough, you know. So that's part of it. You don't want it to be too nondescript. 
or too like too common of a word. That's true. It has to be individual. It has to be you. Can't be Baines two hundred and ninety six. When back when you were called, well, I'm thinking of typical strange is what I mean. Like that was going to be called oblivion. Uh, uh, my name was never in question. If I had it to do again, I guess Baines is pretty. It, it's hard to stand out with that name. It's a Batman villain. It's a bunch of other stuff. So wasn't it's not big though best. back when you named yourself. No, yes. I've been using that name forever. So it's now I'm now it's mine. But uh, yeah, and, typical and... strange. I'm pretty happy with. Although now Doctor Strange is coming out, so it's going to confuse things. <laughs> Damn! Well, <laughs> Damn you, he's, Cabbage Patch. He's oh, not he's typical. Up my shit. What's that? He's not typical. T- exactly. Typical strange is the comic like Doctor Strange, like in his daily life, like when he's not out causing shenanigans and shit. It's like when when he's big typical, like he goes out to get the newspaper and stuff, and like yeah, see that's gonna screw realizes he doesn't have any pants on. He's like, oh no, <laughs> Doctor Strange slice of life comic. Yes, yeah. Exactly, and that that's being neat actually. Yeah, <laughs> would... take it away from me. Bastard. Well, yeah, Pinky, Pinky TA, Pinky has always been my my favorite character, my my uh, my big character. And there's a porn star called Pinky. Who, of course, there is <laughs> Stinky Pinky. <laughs> it, it messes that up. She's got a great bum too, and yeah, it's it's just not right. <laughs> but she hasn't got TA after her name, so I've got that. Got that. I, I have found it funny in that uh, you know when I was building up my personal brand and promoting my comic, so many people would call me Pinky. No, uh, my, my, I've got always an ocean there. Don't call me Pinky, Jesus. Christ. Like people call, <laughs> call, calling Tanya Basil or something. <laughs> Fotis, yeah, that would be like oh, yeah. thinking of her as Fotis and thinking of you have, as Bones. I have, I have had people be surprised that I'm female. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you know, too. I think. Well, once I the think clothes that come off, it basically a... comes with like <laughs> being a comic creator. Like, unless you have a really feminine name, and yeah. and with with your name Tangerine, the English pronunciation, um, because you you have the T Z at the end. So when an English person pronounces it, it sounds more like Tance, and so like it might not be. I mean, it still sounds kind of feminine to me, but still like. It, you wouldn't assume. So I think when people don't have an indicator that the the person is like super female, then they tend to just kind of assume that they're guys. Mm. Yeah, I I think that it's also because it's a, it's not a comic. It's a comic about men in war, not not so many women, I guess. I mean. Yeah. But there, there are women in my comic. Yeah, Martha the Sniper. Yes. The one that would uh, execute me if she came, became alive. <laughs> uh, for our comic Bottomless Waitress, a lot of people assume we're, we're ladies because it's such a sensitive portrayal. <laughs> <laughs> the inner life of females. <laughs> Uh, so we get that a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, get asked to speak at uh, feminist uh, rallies and stuff. <laughs> to tell them. But that that was a thing with with the Pinky Ta. People would naturally assume I was a woman because the main character is female. Yeah. And thought, why? How do you make that connection? How? <laughs> Look at the way she's dressed. <laughs> why do you think a woman does this comic? Oh, well. <laughs> I remember that comic, Lena. I bring it up from time to time. I think it's ended, but uh, or it's not ended, but it just stopped and never continued. I always assumed it was a, a female writing that character and writing that comic because it, it was very, oh, I don't know, just the stereotype. Like you, it, I guess, like I just, just sort of assumed, like, that's got to be a girl writing that. Turned out it was a dude. I but, uh, this up. I you know, God bless comic. him. He did. Uh, yeah. It was this comic about this sort of t- sort of lonely teenage girl who meets this magical uh, worm creature or snake 
you know, this maggot. Oh, yeah. Otherworldly yeah. being. It was a cool comic. It was very... And the emotion in it was really, like, well-realized. It was really good. Like, I just assumed it was... Uh, that the author had a lot in common or whatever with the protagonist, but often not the case. There you are. That is your online branding. All the mm-hmm. comics with female protagonists are done by men, and all the comics with female protagonists. It usually <laughs> seems to go the other way, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's often it's the other way around. Damn. It, it's all catfishing, people. It's all in disguise. Yeah. Like a comic full of like schoolgirls is not going to be done by a schoolgirl, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> They're all <laughs> like middle aged shut ins. Damn it, I have to sort of take my fan art back from that. Yeah, you gotta be careful with that. <laughs> and the, the gritty, like, like nasty comics are, are, are done by ladies. That's what they're doing. Yeah, oh, Frank Miller is really a woman. Frank Miller is a lady. <laughs> Francis. <laughs> well, I think this has been a rather confused sort of thing on online branding. Or yeah, this wasn't out. very good. <laughs> Maybe we should yeah. do the subject no, again. No, no, I think it was good enough. It was good enough. It was it's an approach. It was an attempt. A okay. solid C. Yeah. <laughs> yes. C plus, I'm going to say. <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's me. So thank you guys for being part of my idea of online branding, which I wanted to explore. The the idea. Thank you, Pitface, Bades, and Tants. Thank you. Very welcome. And this has been Quackass 289, and I have been Ozone Ocean. Bye-bye. Bye. You wanted the best and you got the best. Hottest man in the world, Gun Wallace! <laughs> <laughs> Gotta lose your body, to Detroit, New Zealand. <laughs> Kiwi! Everybody go. <laughs>